Hi guys, I have a digital multimeter, yes, one of those, three digits and a half and 0.5% accuracy. I need to get a good one. And this video is made because somebody asked me how to prosper. Okay, let's jump from this digital multimeter and let's improve the electronics laboratory with it. I need a better multimeter. I don't have enough money to buy the brand new one. So I searched in the internet and I found on sale a digital multimeter, four digits and a half, and it has better accuracy, 0.04% or 0.02%. In the ad, it looks good, and its owner said it was functioning and working wonderful. So I jumped on it and I bought it. After one week, now it is here in my lab. I got it, looks okay, supposedly it was working fine, and this kind of multimeter was in production line in my electronics manufacturing. It's good because they are under calibration, but it's bad because they have several hours of working already. Uh, the first issue I found was in the bottom. It's made in USA, it's the battery option unit, and it's 115 volts, but we are here with 220. The first thing that we, you will see with your eyes is the 120 with hand writing, and it's not telling something good from it. Also, it looks like somebody got kind of hard time trying to open the unit, take it apart. And the truth is, it's very easy. Just remove the screw behind the unit and the PCBA with the frontal face, it will fall on your laps. Yes, I turn it on and that's the horrible, annoying noise it makes. And it's because the conversion was not well done. As we said, it's a 115 volts unit and was converted to 220. Something went wrong with it. They couldn't use it here in the production line in Europe. And it was sold from the company, probably to the person who sold the tester to me. And it has been hand to hand. So let's try to fix it. In order to start, and to answer to the ones who said how to prosper in the electronics laboratory, I will use a $4 digital multimeter, something that many people start with when we don't have enough resources. Also, I'm using a $35 computer. It's the Raspberry Pi. This computer works in Linux, is cheaper than your smartphone, your actual computer or your old computer and I like it a lot because I have a lot of things I can use from it and I use it to design here in my workshop many electronics PCBAs I have done I did it with it and some of the PCBAs will be in the market and they came from it so yes we can prosper with the minimum resources it has KiCad, that is the software I must use because it's free. And remember, business is something to get money from, not to put money in. And also it has an external input output port that I use for my stuff. Back to our job. We are searching for the manual for this digital multimeter. And there are several manuals this is one of the most updated ones. We have everything there. Component uh, list, uh, calibration notes, procedures, characteristics, uh, safety notes. And what we are looking for is for my digital multimeter that is the battery pack option. There is without the battery pack and I want to convert this one to this other one. 
the one without the battery. My transformer is not alike, it's different than that. This is my digital multimeter. My transformer is alike with the battery pack that are not here anymore. Somebody tried to make an adaptation and I have to start from it. I connected the tester to a power supply and I made it to work with the following characteristics. 7.5 volts minimum and 550 milliampers as the current. So this is what I have to match as minimum to make this device to work properly. From the notes, I got this, the following information. I need a capacitor 2.8 microfarads plus minus 5%, that is a lot asking in a capacitor, for my 230 volts. If you are in America with 115, you need 5 microfarads. If you are in Japan or another country with 100 volts, you need 6 microfarads. And in the case with my multimeter, somebody tried to make the adaptation and this is the first thing I have to look for. Where is my capacitor? It says it's in an external board, not in the main one, in parallel to the 100K resistor. This is the 100K resistor and this is my voltage and main lines. My capacitor is in parallel to it. And this is the adaptation somebody did. It's made with uh, network wires and it's 4.4 microfarads and it's far away from what I need here in Europe. It looks like somebody was in America and made the, the adaptation to America. So I have to remove this capacitor and create my own. Also, there is an issue here. The capacitor is too close to the power lines and I have to remove it and put it in a new position. This is my new capacitor, 2.75, that is the closest I got. This is the power line and I will place my capacitor with more distance to it, at least 2.5 millimeters or more. The black one is my new capacitor. I am farther away from the 2.5 millimeters and I'm using silicon too. I'm not placing the capacitor direct directly on the PCB. Do not forget guys to use something to grab the capacitor to keep it in place. I'm using nylon tie. Okay, next step. I need to remove the triac and I need to remove the batteries. They are no longer there so this part of the problem, the problem is already solved, but I need to create new conditions for my multimeter. So those diodes have to be replaced. The line they are connected have some modifications. I must add a voltage regulator and some ex extra capacitors in it. So let's see how to do it. The last modification somebody did they place a voltage regulator 5 volts I will remove this voltage regulator I will remove this bunch of capacitors the electrolytic capacitor wasn't enough for it and where is the red one I will place my new voltage regulator right there Also, right there, I will place the blue wire with the voltage that is coming from the rectification. It's a sharp point between the diodes and the electrolytic capacitor I'm going to place. Underneath, somebody did this adaptation and I will remove that but there is a cut on the PCB please guys pay attention because you need to make that cut too 
in this case is to remove the transformer and diodes uh, input and to bring it to the input of the voltage regulator. This is my plan. No longer but battery power supply, it's just a power supply. 2.8 microfarads is already solved. I will place the LM7805 voltage regulator. I will place three capacitors. And in the beginning, I did it with two point uh, with 2200 microfarads and 220 microfarads. Uh, it, but it, it was not enough. After almost two hours test, I realized the voltage was too close to the 7.5 volts I need for the voltage regulator. So later, I went very up and I went to the 4,700 microfarads and the 1,000 microfarads. And the reason is because this power supply was working without capacitors. The batteries, they were the capacitors. So those are the capacitors I initially placed that are later changed. And just to give you an idea, in the position they should be. Those are the rectification diodes and they gotta be removed. So let's disappear them. And now we are going to place our new diodes. With our new diodes, I'm using a blue wire. I'm placing the blue wire here where I told you, in that sharp point with the main capacitor with a smooth electrolytic capacitor. This is what it looks like from the top. Also, I added some holes behind. It's because the temperature goes about 35 degrees close to the 40 degrees. It's not my problem here because it's cold most of the time, but in summer it's going to be some kind of heat, so just to prevent. Do not forget guys, we have to cut this track in the PCB. Keep it in mind. The transformer was hanging down and have to touch some point of solder in the transformer and the ground too. So it's time to take a look what else has to be done in the process before to finish it. This PCB has some oxidation and the reason is because the battery was leaking and the acid start making some damage. I got it some time and I prevent the problem, I remove the solder and I place new solder. As you can watch here, the components leads, they were already with some oxidation. Also by manipulation in the first job somebody did, they bent two of the components. And just to prevent you guys when you have a situation like that, don't try to unbend that because you will break the leads. If it is working fine, leave it as it is and save from extra problems. All right, this was my first test with the first capacitors. This is the five volts input to the board. It compares the plus minus 15 in that board. The ground point and voila. 5.02. I'm using the little cheap $4 tester and um, I just added this other one just to check the temperature. But if you don't have the tester to check the temperature, I recommend you just by touching it. It should not burn you. The test leads they are in short circuit now. Those are the components I removed from the tester. And if somebody remembers about the noise, just check here. I'm recording with another telephone and the digital wire, the white one vertical is not moving so there is not any noise anymore. As I told you, 
I went with some capacitors in the beginning, I changed to 4,700 and 1,000 the smooth capacitor and the output capacitor and I solved my problem because after almost two hours the voltage was close to 7.5 the voltage regulator input so once that I changed the capacitors for the new ones I was very satisfied with the results and I decided to make the final test just to close the tester those are the new capacitors and here in 50 Hz we have one volt peak to peak and that's what we got there so looks very good we can play a little bit with it maybe 10 kilohertz and 10 kilohertz one volt peak to peak 10 kilohertz is a lot for a digital multimeter if it is not a true RMS high frequency means a lot but anyhow it's working very good I like the other one, even better. Let's try some DC. One hundred millivolts. Last time we checked the currency of this function generator in the product review. If you want to watch the video. One hundred millivolts in DC. For one volt DC. This is what we got. So it looks very good. And compared with the other tester, there is about 300 uh, microvolts difference from the one to the other. We are now in 34 degrees Celsius from the ones from the other side of the lake who doesn't know what is 34 Celsius is about 94 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is the kind of conversion we need to solve the battery pack removing and now we are trying ohms and we are in 100 ohms plus minus 1% in the resistor looks very good 1k plus minus 1% also looks very good ten K plus minus one percent. Not too bad. So guys, with this little toy 
we are able to work, make some money, repair things by a better tester than it, and probably improve according to the budget and get better equipment. A computer, another portable tester, another uh, bench multimeter. So prospering is in your mind, is in your attitude. This is the goal what we want and we will not forget it. In my case, I want the ceiling with six digits and a half. And I keep my eyes on it. I will get it. By the moment, I will play a little bit with this and we are going to use it in the electronics laboratory. And this year we'll make some videos about how to prosper in electronics, how to go from zero to up. And remember, if you have a hobby, buy the best equipment you can. If you have a business, business is something to get money from, not to put money in. And you have to prove to yourself, even if you have the budget to do it, but you have to prove to yourself, you are prospering and you are getting what you want. Thanks for watching the video. See you next time. Don't forget to subscribe.